Hey guys, I am out in the garage today and I was getting ready to take some pictures for a blog post that I had written about, all about um, how to use a Craig jig. And I figured it would probably be just as easy to record a video too and it'd probably be a little easier to understand in a video format. So I'm gonna do both. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the jig that we have, um, the pocket hole jig. We have the K5. And um, this is one of the more advanced systems. Um, so I'm gonna be talking showing you how to use it and then talking through some of the features um, and just let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. All right, so this is the K5 system all set up. Um, you can see here that I I just have it um, on my Craig stand just because it's a nice clean place to work, um, but this isn't really a part of it. Um, so this is the system. You can see here that I am using the dust collection port. Um, this is one of the features of the K5 and I have it hooked up to my shop back and that's just gonna help reduce the sawdust. I just got done cleaning the garage so I'm trying to keep it as clean as I can. Um, so a few little features before we get going here. The K5 system has two wings um, with storage that just slide on here and I find these to be super handy because you are able to keep all of your accessories in here so you don't lose these little pieces that are pretty important and that you need to keep around. The other thing that I love about these little storage wings is this screw chart, which is just a really great reference point for what type of screw to use um, given your material thickness. So this comes super in handy as well. All right, so step one is to determine your screw length and type. So this is what I always refer to when I'm picking out my screws. Um, you wanna know what material that you are screwing into and I am using three quarter inch um, pieces right now. So I'm gonna go over here, material thickness, three quarters. I need to use one and a half, one and a quarter inch screws. This here is the Craig Project Kit. It's a just assortment of their most popular screws and it actually comes with the K5 Master System. You can see here that there's several different options. Remember, I'm using the one and one quarter inch I want to use the fine thread because I'm working with hardwoods and zinc coated because this is an interior project. Another thing that I wanted to point out is the different um, material of the screw. So you'll see here the silver ones are zinc coated and that's labeled right here. And then this one in the middle is a blue coat finish, which are these blue ones. Um, and then there's a third type of screw that is not featured in these kits, um, but they are, what do they call it? Stainless steel, sorry. <laughs> They're stainless steel, and I don't have those on hand, but um, the difference, zinc is for anything indoors that you're not worried about moisture. Um, blue coat is for anything outdoors or an area that's gonna be a uh, moisture area, like a bathroom where you think it may get wet or something. And the stainless steel is for areas where there is going to be moisture or in, you're worried about corrosion. Um, so like heavy assault area or something like that. All right, now for step two is to set the height of your block here. Um, I believe this is called the drill block, drill guide block. And this little pen is spring loaded and the material thickness is marked on the side. So we are doing, mine's already actually set, but I'll redo it. So we want it on that three quarter mark and it's going to lock in place. Perfect, so there we go. All right, now for step three, we're going to adjust the stop collar on the drill bit. The stop collar is that circle that goes at the base of the drill bit and it stops the drill bit at a specific spot at the, based on your screw length. You can see here that little platform means you know you're working with a pocket hole drill bit. Now this drill bit is one that I actually love. It's actually sold separately, but I think it's well worth it. It's called the Easy Set Drill Bit and this stop collar around here is very easy to set because there's little markings on the edge of the drill bit right there that show you exactly where to adjust the stop collar to based on your material thickness. It makes this part so easy and I think it's well worth it. You just use the hex wrench provided with your Craig jig to adjust that stop collar up and down. 
And this here is the hex wrench, hex wrench that you would use. It makes this process super easy. And so the way that the stock collar works when you have it um, attached to your drill and you go to put the drill bit in here and actually drill down, the stop collar is going to stop the drill bit at the exact right spot depending on your material thickness. Um, so it doesn't go all the way through the board. All right, so if you don't have the drill bit with the markings, you'll have to kind of do the um, stop collar adjustments manually. So you wanna make sure you have your um, drill guide block set to the right thickness and then you'll bring in this stepped thing right here. Sorry, let me take this out. So you'll bring this in. Oh, it's on this side. Figure out what um, step you're going to use. So I'm gonna use this one. That's the screw length I'm using. So it's the third one over. And I'll line that up with a B here. Load that in to do with one hand here. There we go. So then you would line it up to that. Correct. I kind of want it to go in that hole. There you go. And then you can see here this is already set, but if you didn't have these markings, you would set your stop collar right there where the drill bit step, um, stops on that step. For step four, you're going to adjust the clamp. So the first thing you want to do is to press down on this gray ratchet release and slide the clamp assembly all the way back. Now you can position your piece of wood right here against the drill guide. And then you can put the clamp down. Next, push the clamp all the way forward and you'll hear it clicking until it makes contact with your piece of wood. Now you want to move your clamp in the front back up, but while you do that, you want to use your other hand and hold the clamp assembly in place. And you'll hear it click two times. One, two. Okay, so now when you put your clamp up and down, it's going to be positioned for this piece of wood. So now that I've got the clamp down, you can see that this piece of wood is securely fastened and I can put the clamp in and out and move my different pieces of wood in without having to readjust the clamp every single time. Super handy, right? So for the next step, step five, we're going to drill our pocket holes. So you can see here, I have the piece of wood secured in here and I'm going to drill the pocket holes on the guide B and C. And in the blog post, there's a chart and in your um, manual for the K5, you'll see kind of a little guide on which ones to use based on your material width. I'm going to turn on my shop back. it's time to secure the pocket hole joints. So what I am using is a Craig clamp stand um, or clamp table with a stand. Um, if you don't have one of these, you could use a 90 degree clamp, which Craig sells, or you can just um, secure it, make sure this is a 90 degree angle, and then clamp it down at the joint with um, a clamp, which will come in your, uh, with your K5, this is what the clamps look like, and you could just secure it to a table or a workbench that way. But I really like this clamp table because you're able to get that perfect 90 degree. It's all built into the table. You have a nice flat surface to work on, and the clamps are right here. Um, so you just want to get your 
pieces of wood. Um, these slide, so just make sure that one of these is at your joint, and then you hold the pieces kind of in place. I already have this one clamped down, and you just push down on the clamp. And now we're going to screw it together. For the driver bit that you want to use, this comes with the Craig, and it is a square head, which is what all the Craig screws have, and it's a six inch, um, nice long, so you can get it into the pocket holes. All right, so you put your screw in there. All right, guys, it's as easy as that. So I just want to mention a couple more features before I sign off here. This will also come with your K5 system, and this is the K3, actually, it says on the bottom. And this is just basically a portable base if you wanted to um, take your pocket hole on the go. So you just take the drilling guide out you slide it in here. And then of course you can still make the same adjustments that you would. You won't have the clamp in the base, but you'll still be able to clamp this to your workpiece and drill your pocket holes if you wanted. Another option for a smaller, more on the go pocket hole jig is this one that we also have that we use from time to time. It comes in handy. It is the 320 pocket hole jig and it's much more affordable if you're looking for a lower price point. So you can see here, um, it's obviously a lot smaller, um, but it's nice for, you know, on the go applications or even like the smaller pieces of wood um, we've used it for or pieces that are really, really long and you're not going to be able to stand them up um, to go up out of the base like if they're we had some pieces we were doing that were really long and they wouldn't have worked so we used this instead and um, this is pretty handy these pieces clip in and out and then this is your clamp base that you would attach and then you slide your clamp right in here to attach this to your work piece so and again that is the um, 320 and it comes with you know your drill bits and everything you need so that's another option Again, if you're looking for something at a lower price point or that's on the go and a lot smaller. And the last little bit here before we wrap up is um, plugging up the pocket holes. So if you needed to cover the pocket holes and conceal them for any reason, they do make pocket hole plugs. And these are things that you just glue into place and then you can kind of see there in the picture, it covers them up. These are the oak ones. Um, we also have these ones, which are paint grade. Um, so you can put those in your pocket holes to cover them up if you wanted more of a finished look. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video um, showing you how to set up your K5 Craig pocket hole jig. Um, be sure to let me know if you guys have any comments in the questions below or um, any questions that I can answer. And then we also have a full blog post kind of summarizing everything that we talked about today. You can hop on over to the blog, makingmansanita.com. There's a link down below. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.